Hey guys, this is Christopher at Tampa Harley Davidson. And today we are going to uh, just do a three hole drop for you. And that's gonna be transmission, primary and engine oil, just to kind of show you how we do things here. So I'm gonna get rolling. So if we check out underneath here, our transmission drain plug is vertical facing I pull the uh, uh, the dipstick just so that I can uh, not create a vacuum in there so it flows out a little nicer. We come around to the other side. And now your engine oil drain plug is going to be facing horizontal. It's in the front over here. All right, now that kind of uh, lies true for vast majority of our models where the engine oil drain plug is the only one that lies horizontal. All right, and while we're over here, we're going to drain the primary oil, which on this model is a little Torx drain plug, whereas most models will continue to be this style drain plug just right here. And again, I'm going to remove my derby cover as well as my engine oil dipstick just so that it'll drain faster. Yeah, it is, but I mean, honestly, it's not abnormal for your for your uh, primary oil to be a, a bit different of a color, your engine oil is going to be dark and your transmission oil will generally be, be more clear, assuming you're doing proper maintenance. Um, it's, the primary is a different color because of the clutch plates, the friction plates. They're always um, working as hard as they can be working every time you're riding. Whereas if you have an easy ride, your transmission and your engine might be fine but your clutch is working back and forth and back and forth with every gear, every stop, every go. So that oil always looks a little more off. All right, now for removing my derby cover on this one, again, this particular model, my, uh, my passenger footboard is in the way of one of my five screws. So instead of trying to combat it and try and squeeze something in there that works, it's, it's just way more easy to get it removed and we'll just reinstall it again later. Personally, I like to undo them in a cross pattern, same as you would uh, install and torque it. All right, so at this point, we just, uh, we let the drain in drain. For removing our uh, oil filter, you can pick up an oil filter wrench at the dealership, at any dealership. We've got them here at Tampa Harley. It's got this cutout for your crank position sensor. Um, so whichever kind of oil filter wrench you're using, you're gonna to wanna to just stay aware of your sensor. Um, like again, some models, it's, there's enough room. Some models, it's right there. All right, so um, in my experience and observation, there's no way to remove your oil filter without creating a mess. So. Embrace the mess, be ready for it. As you can see here, there's only a few ounces that come out, but if you don't have something there to catch it, that's enough to uh, be stressful in the garage. What does the oil tell you about the health of the, the bike in general? So far, it's good. what I'm seeing, what I'm smelling, it looks like this motorcycle here is uh, maintained properly at the proper service intervals, the proper oils are getting changed. So for 75,000 miles, this is not 75,000 mile oil. This is a few thousand mile oil, which is exactly what we want to see. You know, we never want to see our oil look terrible. We always want to see oil coming out looking relatively good. It shows maintenance. These drain plugs have magnetic tips. This was our engine oil and there's nothing on there, which is outstanding. A brand new motor will have wear and tear and there will be little metal shavings on it. Primary, again, current day models will have a plug like this for your primary, but this, uh, this 2003 has this style and a, a primary where your clutch is, that drain plug will always have what looks like goo. It's just little metal shavings with oil blended together to create this nonsense. So before we go back in, we just make sure that it's cleaned 
and then we'll be uh, safe to roll until our next service. Now the thing is, is if it comes out and there's a ton on there, we're gonna wanna check it out regardless of which hole that drain plug came from. And this was the transmission drain plug. Just a tiny little bit of metal shavings, which again, super normal to have a little bit. We just don't wanna see excessive. So while we're waiting for this to drain, we're just going to uh, clean our drain plugs and slap some new O-rings on them. For what it's worth, a couple dollars for an O-ring. Could be very expensive if we don't replace 54, it. 54 cents? 54 cents? It's just if you don't replace it and it's torn or damaged, it's just not at all worth saving that little amount of money. On this style drain plug, we just wanna put a little bit of pipe sealant on here in lieu of an O-ring. Yes, yes, uh, Teflon tape will work. Again, if, we're, if that's what you're using, you don't want to uh, go in excess. And we do not put this on the other style drain plugs. All right, so now that we're all drained on all three chambers of oil, we're just gonna put the plugs back in so that we can resume our service. New O-rings for our drain plugs. But also I think a, a good word of advice is get, get things started by hand. That way you make sure it's going in straight. Because if you try to go in with your ratchet or your wrench or whatever tool you're using, problems may ensue. For our new oil filter, we want to prime the oil filter by just putting in a few ounces. And then also making sure we get some oil around the, uh, the O-ring here, the mating surface of the oil filter to the engine. When we get it on, once it's, once it's kind of seated there, you only want to go about a half to three quarters of a turn more. There's no reason to over tighten your oil filter. All that's going to do is create problems down the road for the next time it needs to come off if it wants to come off. We need a, we need a funnel. Twin cam touring bikes have an engine oil capacity of three and a half quarts. So I'm just going to get rolling on that. All fluids, all tires, all brake pads is, the motor company makes this. It's good for the bike. Um, I don't do aftermarket tires. I don't do aftermarket brake pads. I, 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 I discourage aftermarket oil. If the AMS oil formula was the best for the bike, Sin 3 would duplicate that formula. You know what I mean? So we've got, three and a half you can measure it out you can eyeball it do what you got to do reason we want to be cautious of overfilling our engine oil is because if there's too much oil in there it's got to come out somehow it comes out through your air cleaner and it blows all down the side of your bike and then everyone's bummed out this is a five-speed transmission the five-speed transmission on this bike takes 20 to 24 ounces. We've got heavy synthetic gear oil. We've got 20 ounces. The primary oil on this model is 32 ounces. So we're just gonna drop the full cord in and call it a day. Um, a good rule of thumb is you wanna make sure you can take a flashlight and look down in there and you can see the circumference of your clutch plates. You wanna make sure that the oil in your primary is touching those plates. Again, this, this model makes it kind of tough because it's so tight, but if we follow this down, yeah, you can't really see it in this model. Yeah, we can't even you can see the barely in the bottom there. Right. That's real hard to see. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, people with other newer bikes will be able to look down and be like, oh, okay, I see it. Which is exactly what we're hoping for. Right. All right, now if we're going back together, different models use different gaskets, or if you have um, an accessory derby cover, you're gonna be going with a plate. Now, towards clutch. This should not need to be explained, but let's explain it. Towards the clutch means towards the clutch pack, not towards the clutch cover. 
The reason that is, is because this red ring right here is what seals that closed. Now, if you just changed your oil like that and called it a day, you might find yourself scared when you take off on your ride, find a parking spot and put it down because there's a lot of residual oil from your oil filter that finds its way into your motor mount, behind your regulated rectifier on a frame. Some bikes have an oil cooler here with a little cowl and it just holds a lot of residual oil. So um, brake clean will get the job done. You could take soapy water, you could take any number of different things to make sure that the front of your motor is nice and oil free, residual oil free. Now therein lies the basics of our three hole oil drop. All right, now that we're done with our test ride, we're gonna make sure that our hot oil level is good. All right, so, first off, we wanna clean the dipstick, drop it back in. On this bike, we check the engine oil on the side stand. As we can see, we're good. We could add probably about a half a quart. So I'm gonna do that just to make sure that our oil level is as optimal as it can be before I send it back out onto the road. And then the transmission dipstick on this model is checked upright. So again, first things first, we just wipe it off. All right, so again, on this model, we check the transmission oil upright. We just clean the dipstick and we're golden. All right, so what we've done so far is we've changed our primary oil, our engine oil, and our transmission oil. We've cleaned the front end, that way there's no residual oil. Went for a test ride made sure everything sounded and felt normal. Then I checked my oil levels hot. Now I leave it here for our wash bay, for a complimentary wash, before you get here and pick it up and ride home on a clean bike with new oil. <laughs>